We are going to be doing the, the bird painting and we will be starting with the background. I have my bird uh, masked and I used uh, masking tape to do that but uh, you could use masking fluid if you want to. So I have the water everywhere. Now my brush is wet because I've been applying water. I'm not going to necessarily go put any water on my brush, but I am going to just go right into my paint that should be wet and kind of drippy on my palette. And when I start up here, I'm just going to start by putting some color on and imagine leaving some spaces that like they are for the bird. Now what you will see on my paper is what I was going, hopefully would, would happen, is that my paper is wet enough that there is a lot of movement from that color. And wet on wet, if you are wanting to control where your shapes are and how big they get and uh, maybe the look of the edges, um, when your paper is very shiny and wet, it's a lot harder to control that uh, surface and keep the shapes where you want them. Now, the other thing that I was just thinking about is when you are applying um, paint to a wet area, if you are trying to keep the paint more where you want it and you're trying to use less pigment and water in your brush, sometimes moving to a smaller brush can actually help you control how much the pigment moves. Now I'm going to just go back and start looking at the shapes. So up in this upper left, there is a little bit of darker value at the top still of that shape up there. And I could uh, ignore that and just leave it the way it is if I'm happy with it, or I can increase its value. So just to show you, if I increase the value that it will make it stand out a little more. I am going to use uh, clear water. My um, area that I painted on the right side is still slightly damp, so there is just a touch of moisture right up on along that edge. And I'm going to take the water and come up near where I was painting before. And I'll wet maybe, oh, two or three inches down the paper just to give myself some room to work. And because this brush doesn't hold as much water, it should kind of keep from being too wet when I place the water on there. So I'm getting the cobalt with a touch of the burnt sienna in it. I want to keep it on the blue side of that mix. And I'll dry the back of my brush. And then I'm going to the top of that bluish uh, area back there. And I'll just paint a little bit of color on and let it blur down into the the lower section. Uh, like I said last time, I like to have the face of the bird working or the animal or the person. The uh, face can be really important and if it's not quite working then um, you know, a lot of the time I may have to rework something or sometimes if it's really important, then I may scrap the painting and redo if I've messed something up. If I come up under this feather and then let that fade down just a little bit, now the feather that's above it will separate. I can see that the values for mine on this left side aren't quite uh, as dark as I might want them. And so I can literally take my brush with a little bit of that gray and a touch of my rose in it and I can just go right over this left side and that will push that left side back a touch more and round him a little bit more.